Hello groovy chicks and hip cats. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch and season's greeting. It's Christmas time here and now. The KH gave me a special responsibility to give you this quote from the great Charles Dickens from his novel, beautiful classic book called The Christmas Carol. And this is Marley's ghost talking to Scrooge and he says this, it is required of every man or woman that the spirit within him or her should walk abroad among his fellow men or women and travel far and wide and if that spirit goes not forth in life it is condemned to do so after death. <laughs> it is doomed to wander through the world, ah woe is me, and witness what it cannot share but might have shared on earth and turned into happiness. Wow, that is one of the most important and profound statements ever made in any literature. And it is so truth. And the KH is trying to do that. I know he's trying to catch up on all his past regressions. But anyway, I'm speaking for him tonight. And here he is, the KH. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Jazz Ranch and Season's Greetings. I'm sorry for the alter dominant ego man, but you know, he actually said something important tonight, and I'm, I'm actually honored by that. And uh, so maybe he's not as bad as I thought he was, because he's always goofing on me. This was an important quote. And if you haven't read The Christmas Carol, you definitely should read it by Charles Dickens. Anyway, it's, it, it will change your life, I guarantee it. I guarantee it will change your life if you read that book. And right now I'm going to be doing a Christmas song, uh, a tarm bomb. It's a old Christmas tree. It's a traditional song, English song, but it's there's no composer. Wow, who could that person have been? We don't know. But anyway, I'm going to play it, inspired by the Vince Giraldi, uh, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas record, in which he does this song. I'm going to reharmonize it a little bit and uh, give it to you and it will be written out for you. So here we go now with a great Christmas song, O Christmas Tree.
I'm going to divide this tutorial into two sections. First, talking about the three techniques that I'm using in this song and how I'm mixing them up. That's the important thing, is to learn the techniques and then begin to blend them together into a complete uh, arrangement. And the second part, I'm going to talk about the improvisation. So starting out, now I just used this Russell Malone. I copped his introduction. It's a, I think it's a nice one. Now, I had to hear the fact that that note was flatted, that it was a slightly dissonant. So it could, could be like that. Now, that's not dissonant, but this is more dissonant. So like that. So that's the introduction. It's just a little setup for the melody. Now, the melody goes like this. Now, the first part is, is a um, locked hands. Now, that just means that I'm doubling the melody note here in the, in the left hand, and I'm playing the full voicing, the F6, going here now on this passing tone. Now, I think of that as a passing tone on the scale of F, right? Chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, like that. So that note becomes now, I'm going to harmonize it as a diminished chord. What does that do? It pulls me to the next chord, rather than just playing like this. Or like that, I'm make, that's not diminished. This is diminished. So it has a little bit more pull because that the chromatic move there to there. A minor, that's an F, actually F6 inverted. Now to a, another diminished chord, or you can think of it as a D7 flat 9, or you can think of it as an F sharp diminished. Now here we go again. Diminished. G minor 7, another diminished chord, and then another diminished chord here. See, so those diminished chords fit in nicely with the, what you would call the passing tones or the non-chord tones. In other words, the tones that aren't in that tonal center of F. In this case, I'm just going to talk about the tonal center of F. You know, chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, that kind of thing. So now it repeats. And this now, this drop two is happens here. There's a drop two. That just means if I voice the chords like this in the right hand, harmonizing every note, it would sound like this. But I'm taking now, I'm taking one of the notes out and putting it down here in, in the... Um, so I'm taking, I'm taking that note out, the second note from the top, drop two, drop two down an octave. This is a very common way of, of harmonizing songs that um, Tin Pen Alley composers use this and arrangers around the world for many years. They have this very nice sounding harmony or distribution of the tones. See that note doesn't exist in this chord, so it complements it. There it is. It does. It is there, but then it's not there. Now, on the bridge, we go to the spread voicing. So that's the third technique. We had the locked hands, the drop two. Now the third technique that's very important is the spread voicing. Now you're spreading it out. Now you may say, I can't play that chord. Well, you just you just like that. That's a tenth, A minor tenth, one, five, ten. You just jump to it like that, holding it with the pedal, like so. Now that's a very dense sounding chord because it has a 1, 3, flat 7, sharp 9, flat 13 in it. Same thing there, 1, 7, flat 9. That's a sharp 11 now. And then sharp 11 again there. Now, how do I know that? Let's go here. Okay, so I'm going to go 8, 9, 10, 11, sharp. You see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, sharp. Call that a sharp 11 or flat 5. Now, here's the Vince Giraldi chord there. This is the G flat major. That chromatic move. From G flat major down to F. Then I reharmonized here. Instead of going back to the one chord, I went to the flat 
five of sharp four, which works with the one chord often like this, down to the four minor, and then the three half diminished to the six dominant, then, and then here we have the, there's a kind of like a B flat minor six with the third on, in the bass, doubling that note. Drop, dropped three actually. I'm going to talk a little bit about the improvisation. Now, I'm basically using this scale, the F scale, and but then I'm altering it for each chord. Like I'm having F, G minor, A minor to a D7. Now I want to bring in that that note there. Then I'm using an altered dominant scale on the. C7 chord, the 5 chord, so I'm altering that. Dominant chords, you want to alter them in some way, so I'm adding, this is an altered dominant scale, you can look it up on my tutorials, but it, it's flat 9, sharp 9, sharp 11, 13. Now, after I play this a couple of times, I'm, then I get into this thing where I'm doing upper extensions and I'm playing fourth voicings and I'm so I'm using a lot of pentatonic scales and also blues scales like this that's a blues scale and then I'm using this now what is that well that is it's okay that's it's a B flat no it's not it's an E flat second mode that's an E flat major pentatonic there using the second mode which now makes it an F sus. Now that works over that whole progression in F in the first section of the tune, the two A sections. So I can I can use that and then I can use these voicings that fit that chord. Like I'm gonna actually I'm gonna use all these fourth voicings and then with that scale it sounds like this. So the idea is, how do you know when to use it? Well, you use it when there's a long passage in which you can set, get the sense of a pedal tone, that there's one chord that can fit the whole progression. So you're holding it on a pedal tone, like... That's the important thing to understand. Even though there's chord changes going on in movement, you can kind of hold it there. It's another way of improvising and another way of, con of a concept of har harmonic uh, progressions is that you can create a pedal tone in which you're holding and it's so good to mix it up like that. So not always have chord changes like this, all these chord changes, but just to sort of put it in suspension and create drama. It's a great way to create create drama and then when you hit the bridge now it, it releases you from the drama of that pedal tone which is very... Um, sounds like a um, chord in suspension or a chord that is trying to resolve that's a tension chord you know like and then it finally resolves to the one and then it goes back the chord changes so i hope you like this arrangement of o terrenbaum o christmas tree and it was based on the arrangement by Vince Giraldi, and I did my own thing with it, and I hope you like it. I've written out for you so you can learn it. And I used the three techniques I talked about and some improvisation. So please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, we're going to wrap up now. Let's wrap up, and I'm signing off from the Jazz Ranch and wishing you season's greetings, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, and have a wonderful 2018. All the best to you. Please write to me. I love to hear from you. I will always try to write back to you. That's one thing I try to always do is write back to all my comments and emails. So stay with me. And until next time I will say, in the words of my great friend Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, I will say, swing loose. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.